This semester, you're going to be using Microsoft Teams in your course. You can find Teams online easily from the waffle menu in your student email. It's a great idea to also download the app to your device, and I've placed a link to where you can do this in the description for this video. Teams on your phone is a great way to get course notifications, and also to share what you find out there with the course. You can get Teams for free from your App Store. When prompted, make sure you choose your university email to sign in. Let's take a look at some of the features of the app. This bell icon is the activity feed. It shows you everything that has happened in all your teams since you last looked in. And when there is a red dot here, it means there are responses waiting for you. Teams also notifies you with sounds and pop-up banners in the corner of your screen, and it will eventually send you an email to your Outlook inbox as well. You can control what kind of notifications you get for different messages by clicking into your profile picture and then selecting Settings and Notifications. If you can't find a conversation you've had, try filtering your activity feed to find messages from a particular person. Or you can search Teams using the bar at the top. Click into Chat when you want to have a personal conversation with just one or a few people. To start a chat, click on the pencil icon here at the top, then start typing and select the names you want. If you have chatted with the person before, all your chat history will come up. You can pin a chat to the top of your list to make it easier to find, and you can even name a chat. If you feel like having a face-to-face -face chat, just click on the video icon to video conference with your friends. Your tutor or course convener may schedule an online meeting using this video conference tool. You can join an online Teams meeting from the invite post or by clicking into your Teams calendar. This Teams icon is where you navigate between different teams. I'm in this cellular biology team right now, but I have others as you can see when I click here on all teams. When you're in the team, there are different channels where you can communicate and your lecturer may have divided these up based on topic or purpose. If a channel name is bold, it means there's something new to check out since you last clicked into that channel. When you respond in a channel, everyone in the team can read it, so remember, save your private communications for chat. Notice that there are a number of tabs across the top of each channel. The Conversation tab is always your landing page. The Files tab is where you can find any files that have been uploaded, and where you can create a file for group work, such as a PowerPoint presentation. If you see a Notebook tab, your course convener may have put resources or activities in there for you. To see what pages are in your notebook, click on the small purple arrow. You can open this notebook in a web browser or in the OneNote app if you have it installed. When you're responding to a channel conversation, make sure you hit Reply. Typing in this box starts a new conversation. If you fluff it and post in the wrong channel or start a new thread instead of replying, don't worry, you can always delete and repost. We've all been there. If a conversation has important information that you might want later, you can save it by clicking into these three dots. You can find your saved conversations by clicking into your profile picture. If you want to get someone's attention in Teams, you at mention them. Just type an at symbol, then start typing their name and select it when it comes up. You can also at mention a channel or even a whole team if you want. Conversations in channels work best when people feel encouraged to respond and share. And one way you can do this is by using likes and emojis to support the posts of others. Think about how good you feel when you get those likes and spread the love around. And make sure you have some fun with GIFs, stickers and memes.